Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this quick video, we're going to look at two new attributes that have been added to curve support in geometry nodes. Let's get into it. Here we have a standard geometry node tree on a cube object. It's referencing a Bezier curve that's populating the curve socket on a curve to mesh, and then a Bezier circle that's populating the profile curve on that same node, and then those are populating the geometry output. Recently, we saw the addition of the resample curve node. This lets us adjust the amount of geometry that's created along a curve and make sure that it's created evenly. Up until now, two attributes have been exposed for curve splines, resolution and cyclic. As of today, May 12th, three new attributes were added to the point domain on a curve. Those are tilt, position, and radius. I'm going to adjust the profile curve so that it's no longer a perfect circle. And now I'm going to use this attribute fill node to adjust the tilt. As we can see from the dropdown, the point tilt attribute is a float, so we can leave this on float. And when we adjust the value, we can see how it affects our curve. Instead, if we were to add an attribute randomize and add it to our tilt, we could get some interesting effects, especially if we increase the count. In addition to tilt, we can also adjust the radius, which is also a float. Using the attribute fill node changes every point along the curve. Just like the last time, we can see what this does with a randomize. We could of course combine these effects. The position attribute contains the position of each point. Here, I'm going to do an attribute vector math and look at the distance between the point position and the vector 0, 0, 0. Now the distance operation returns a float, so I'll go ahead and put that into radius. This means that the further the point is away from the world origin, the larger the radius of the curve will be. So there you have it. Three new attributes on curves in geometry nodes. To use this, Make sure to download the newest build of Blender 3.0 Alpha. If you're not building it yourself, you'll probably need to wait until the date is May 13th on builder.blender.org for Blender 3.0. I hope this gives you some cool ideas of some things to try, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to hit subscribe. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time.